new to looping? Then stay tuned. I'm going to teach you how to use a looper pump. Loopers are great practice tools. They're also a great way to have backing tracks. You can transfer them ahead of time or you can create a bunch of backing tracks and store them and then loop over them later. Or you can also perform live looping with the unit. First thing you're going to need is a looper pedal. It could be something like a Ditto or one of the off brands that are like that. Um, it could be a Boss RC1 or here I have an RC3 or something that's built into your multi effects if you have one of those. The point is to just have something to start off with. You can always trade up later on. Now for your lipper pedal, you're going to need um, power. So like this particular RC3 can use a battery, but you're going to go through a lot of batteries. So I would basically save that for performance or unless you want to use rechargeable batteries. Easier just to buy a power supply. You can buy the boss's power supply or the one spot works really well. And uh, those are easy to get, you know, they're about $15. The other thing you're going to need is two cables. You're going to need one to go from your instrument into the looper and you're going to need another one to go out from the looper to your amp or powered speaker. And once you're set up, all you need to do is practice, 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 and you'll get the hang of it and soon you'll be having lots of fun. First, I'm going to show you some stuff with the guitar and then I'll show you uh, some things with the mic. And then finally, I'll do some things with a keyboard. Okay, so here I am with my acoustic guitar. So this guitar is an acoustic electric, so I just plug it straight in. If you don't have an acoustic electric, you can buy one of the like stick-on pickups or one that goes in the hole, um, or alternatively, you could use a mic, which I'll show you uh, later. Okay, so here is the looper pedal. And so this is coming from the guitar in to the mono and then I'm going out from the mono into the amp. So now this looper is set up so that when you hit it, it starts recording. And when you hit it again, it ends the loop and starts looping. And then if you want to dub it, you have to hit it again to dub and then you would hit it to stop dubbing. Now you can, reprogram it so it automatically goes into dub after you finish the first loop but you know that's not what we're set up for now okay so the first thing i'm going to do is i'm going to basically make my own backing tracks so i'm going to record the whole song start to finish and i'm going to show you how to do that that's how most beginners start off using this all right so you need to give yourself a time because if you're going to come back and play over this you need to know when to come in. So a good thing to do is just to tap on it. And then it's going to record those taps. I'm just using the heel side of my hand. It's going to record those sort of like drum beats and that'll be like your counting. Okay. And so now I'm going to make a backing track of the rhythm part of Plaisir de Amour. I'm going to hit the looper to start the record. Then I'm going to tap myself in and then I'm going to play the rhythm part and then I will tap it again to start the loop. Okay, here we go. The chord. some of the simple loopers like the one that's on my multi effects in the 80 that I showed you and some of the dittos and some of the other ones once you start the, stop the loop it's gone it just vanishes so you have to check on your looper to know if it's gonna just stay on there uh, until you get rid of it or if, if it just disappears as soon as you stop it so you just need, need to know that going into it um, 
And then some of them you can save it, like this particular one. I could, if I decide I like it, I can save it or I can just easily delete it by um, hitting like a couple of buttons or just going to the next thing. It'll, it'll just delete it if I changed tracks. So now I'm going to play the loop and then I'm going to play the melody over it. Here we go. that this looper has a volume knob on it so that you can set how loud you want the loop to feed back. So obviously if I'm gonna play over it, I might want it a little softer. Sometimes we're adding extra sounds to make ourselves louder to play over the loop, but you can set that to what you, what you want for when you're playing. Okay, for step two, we're gonna lay down a short four measure loop and then I'm going to play over it. Now what you need to do in order to make this work is you have to play on one and then you end the loop on one. So that means you're going to start on one of the first measure and then you're going to hit it to end the loop on the one of the fifth measure. So it's at, after the end of the loop, you have to hit it one in order for it to loop on time. You can hit it any other time, it will loop, but it won't, it won't be even but it'll still work. It just won't be what you're quite looking for. I'm gonna have to put this down on the floor to actually make this work. Okay, so I'm going to play a short four chord in C. So C, A minor, F, G. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one. use this is that they'll actually start strumming to get the rhythm and, and get it nice before they hit it so we can try that I see that works too so obviously you could continue on with more layers but I'm going to switch over to the mic to show you that okay, so let's talk about mics before we start some mics need phantom power and some mics don't. It also depends on what chord you have. So this is an old Shure mic that is very similar to an SM58. Um, and back when I bought it in the 90s, they sold me uh, just a, a regular guitar type of plug-in cable because I guess I had a guitar amp at the time and that's what I was using. Um, and I have actually plugged this into my street cube and tried it with both as an instrument and as a mic it works both ways as an instrument it's a very low signal and i gotta really turn it up and as a mic it's a really powerful signal and i've really got to turn it down okay so if you have a power so if you if you're using something like this you can of course plug this in pretty much any looper it's going to work just fine you just need to adjust your levels and adjust your gain so it doesn't feedback too much because it's really the gain in the guitar amp. So if you have your amp turned up to breakup or distortion, you need to turn it down very clean uh, to run your mic in. Okay, so, um, but if you're, if you want power, then you need a different cord. So this is, this is the same end that's plugged into this mic. And then you'll need to have this sort of an end here with the three prongs uh, to go into the phantom power. And then you're going to need a different looper because this looper, that looper is not going to do it. But this looper here comes with that connection right there, if you can see it in the light, right? So that will take the three prong phantom power. So if you're sure that you're going to need a mic that's going to need phantom power, then you need to buy a looper that can support that to begin with. So now I'm going to teach you how to do multiple layers. So after we put down the initial layer, I'm going to kind of let it run through and then I'm going to hit it again to dub the next part. And then I'll end that loop 
um, and then I could hit it, think I could think a little bit and then hit it again to add the next part and etc. Some people just hit it dub and just kind of let it go and just keep adding things until they're done and then they can turn it off because it will just keep adding things. You can also again set it so that after you complete your first loop, it goes right into the dub mode and you can just start dubbing right then. I personally like to have a little think time between things and hear the rhythm and the and the timing as I'm coming up with ideas. But you know, it's personal. If you've been doing this, if you've been working really hard on perfecting a certain layer and you're performing for an audience and you're trying to get it smooth and as fast as you can, then you prefer to you might prefer to have those dubs come as quick as possible. But if you're you're creating in the flow and you're creating mostly for yourself, then it's really nice to have some thought time in between. Here we go. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. So this one has a built-in rhythm that I can turn on. A little loud, so we'll turn it down. A little fast, so tap tempo. Go tap tempo. Go tap tempo. Oh. <laughs> Go tap tempo. Okay, so this one has a built-in, some built-in rhythms, some drums. So I can turn that on. It's a little loud, so let's turn it down. And it has a tap tempo, so I can slow that down if I want to. Or speed it up. One, two. Okay, and so I can use that as part of what I'm doing when I'm making things. Bum, 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 bum. one also has a few other things so you could go and choose choose some different drums if you decide that you want that you have to hold it in and there you go and then I can go up and two up and then turn okay so I also wanted to tell you that if you have one of the boss products and some of the other ones may do this too you can get this extra uh, pedal and I can plug it into where it says stop memory shift. And that way, instead of doing the double tap, bum, 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 bum. I can just hit this one easy thing to turn off. Bum, 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 bum. So much easier. Okay, and so now we're up to the keyboard portion. So the keyboards, if you're using a keyboard, often has built-in drums. So that is an option if you want to use built-in drums. So I can start this and then hit the looper at the same time. And you hear that? It's picked it up and now it's coming out of the looper. So that's something fun to do if you want to use some drums. thing that's kind of fun to do too so there are among all the different instruments inside all these keyboards even this little $50 Donner um, when this one has touch sensitivity which is really unusual for uh, this level of keyboard um, there's all these drum sounds so you can actually do finger drumming now if you go down to the lowest C that's your bass drum and there's your snare Down just a little bit because it tends this drums tend to be a little loud so here we go Oops, sorry all right so here we go and again 
add some more fun things into it. Whichever things I feel like doing. And record. that this keyboard is actually plugged into my guitar amp right now and I just again had to trim the gain way down and it worked fine you know I'm sure of course you could use keyboard amps and and, and other things but yeah you know for this little bit of looping it works just fine okay, so in summary when you have your looper you press once to record again to end the loop once again if you want a dub and then you in, uh, press it again to end the dub and then when you want to finish you double tap or you can use an extra pedal and tap that. All right. And so now you're ready to go out and get a looper and start looping and having lots of fun and learning all sorts of new tricks. Uh, please, if you have any questions, please put those in the comments. Otherwise, I hope this was useful to you and you're ready to go out and start looping and having lots of fun. Happy looping.